Hello, fellow Americans. My name is Mr. Steffler. I'm coming to you from room 111 at Clintondale Middle School. And I'm here to talk about chapter 13 and the growth of our nation, not only growing in the sense that it's getting larger, but it's definitely growing and um, developing its own personality. And our nation is, um, is almost doubled in states at this point. Um, we are in the 1820s. And so I want to talk about the, um, the chapter 13 test and I want to talk about the chapter 13 notes that are due. So let's first talk about the chapter and how it starts out. The chapter starts out talking about America's physical landscape. We have um, the Rocky Mountains on our western border. We have um, we have our Mississippi River, which is kind of um, you know what is considered the west at that time, the Appalachian Mountains to the Mississippi River. Most Americans at that time lived near the Atlantic Ocean. You know they lived in cities like New York and. Boston and Baltimore and these um, cities on uh, Philadelphia that are on the East Coast. Um, only one in 10 Americans lived west of the Appalachian Mountains. Almost two thirds of Americans, two out of every three, lived within 50 miles of the Atlantic Ocean. So we talked about how not only our nation is growing, like I said, we have um, 23 states instead of 13. It's almost doubled in size. And we also are um, changing in a sense that we're we're very pumped up about the War of 1812. Um, Uncle Sam has become a new symbol of the United States government. Um, the War of 1812 also brought a sense of national pride after the British burned down the White House. You know, we rebuilt it bigger and better. We rebuilt the Capitol bigger and better. So a lot of those things uh, made us seem um, very nationalistic, like everybody was pumped to be an American. While at the same time, our country was definitely in um, regions, like the Northeast is where the cities were, where manufacturing was, the South is where agriculture was happening, and the West was, you know, just people surviving and people um, trying to forge a new life out of a wilderness. So um, during this time, we have um, one political party. We have uh, the Democratic Republicans, the Federalists, kind of um, kind of withered away during the War of 1812, and this ushered in what's called the Era of Good Feelings. The Era of Good Feelings is a time of political unity. Um, during that time, we came up with the American system, which, um, as you know, um, has transportation and uh, a tariff and a national bank, and those three things are meant to help um, – you know, increase the economy and make that better for what our economic system is, which is called capitalism. And capitalism basically means if you own it, you can sell it. And if you sell it, you can keep the money for it. You can keep the profits. So, um, you know, this, this chapter talked about John Marshall and how John Marshall um, never took the side of the states. He always took the side of the federal government and he always took the side of businesses because he thought businesses and the federal government were the wave of the future. And John Marshall was the Supreme Court Chief Justice. So that's asked about on the test. You know, he just never sided with the states. He felt like if the states could do their own thing, that our country would have chaos. So John Marshall was against... Um, against the states and always really for the national government and for business. Um, the end of the chapter talks about art, music, and, um, and literature in the chapter. Um, it talks about a number of different authors. It talks about um, James Fendimore Cooper, who wrote Last of the Mohicans, the movie we saw in class. You know, and a lot of his stories are about the frontier. The frontier is kind of like space is now, like modern, like... Today's Star Wars, back then, it was Last of the Mohicans, and instead of space being the frontier, you know, Michigan or Ohio was the frontier, and so he wrote about the frontier. We also learned about um, Washington Irving, who I, you know, I showed you the um, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow in class, so he, ta he talked about things like ghosts and, and fictional things like that. Um, we talked about Longfellow, who wrote Paul Revere's Ride and the Song of Hiawatha. So we talked about those authors who are important to American history. We also talked about artists, the Hudson River School, um, American art, mainly was folk art. Like um, I talked about John Audubon, um, who is famous for his paintings of birds. 
And um, in the music section, you know, we talked about basically, you know, we had classical tunes, American, um, you know, American patriotic tunes were in. But like the most popular thing at the time were these minstrel shows. And these minstrel shows were basically um, white artists who often mimicked the things that African-Americans did um, as far as music goes. And that's still something that happens today. Um, so without further ado, um, good luck on the test. Uh, God bless you. And God bless America.